feel like it's five o'clock right now, so let's get rolling. And again, um, if you're here and if you could leave just a little message that I'm here, that would be great. If you want to leave, um, if you want to tag a friend in, uh, in the comments of this uh, video and say, hey, it's a free five day challenge, you might want to join us, that would be great. Tag your friends. Okay, so let's get started. Oh, so just so you know what we're working on today, I don't know if I mentioned it. Today's practice is about increasing focus and attention, something that I feel like everybody can use a little bit more of right now. I certainly can. And um, the increasing focus and attention also uh, is really benefited by this Brahmana uh, approach to practice. So what we're going to do is some very simple, we did a little bit yesterday, very simple pauses in the breath in order to just push that window of tolerance a little bit and um, bring a little more awareness, a little more norepinephrine, uh, a little more awareness, a little more energy in, into your practice. And you're not gonna feel like you drank coffee. It's not like that. It's more like soup. <laughs> it's like nourishing soup rather than coffee. I hope the sound is okay. Let me know if anything's not good, but it looks like things are good. Okay, so let's, go in, and let's get going. If on Instagram, if you're having trouble hearing me, you can always pop over to Facebook because um, my, my microphone is hooked up to Facebook. Okay, so, um, so let's get started. We're gonna just uh, begin with a little shaking it out. You can shake out your hands, shake out your feet. Just kind of shake off the day a little bit. Um, these are short practices. We're just doing 30 minutes and it's also with this idea of like, 30 minutes is good, you know, it's enough. If you don't have 90 minutes, it's fine. 30 minutes will do something for you. And shake out your hips and shake out your shoulders. Let it all go. Okay, so we're gonna start with a practice that I like to call moving mountain, Tadasana. And as you inhale, you wanna let your weight move into the front of your feet as your arms float up. And when you exhale, let the arms float back down, turn the palms down, let the arms float back down and the heels float back down. Let your weight kind of move back into your heels. Now next time we do this, inhaling, lifting up at the top, pause for two counts. And then on your exhale, release back down. Good. So we're going to do that three more times. Inhale up to the top and pause for two counts. Just bring a little bit more energy in there. Exhale down. So yesterday I was talking about the pause. You don't want to clamp when you pause. It's almost like you're still breathing in. Just a little pause before you come down. Like when you're making the bed and you lift up the sheet and before it floats down, that's the same kind of feeling, right? There's a little pause. Okay, and then we'll do one more and this time we'll stay in the pose. Just breathe freely. Now, as you exhale, soften your shoulders and elbows a little bit, lower your hips a little bit. And as you inhale, lengthen your arms, your spine, reach a little higher. Exhale, soften just a little bit, let your shoulders soften, let your heels soften a little bit. Do one more nice deep breath. And then on your exhale, float it all back down. And when you get down here, just rest for a moment and notice, notice sensation. Okay, so here's the next one. Step your left foot forward. Step your right foot back. Bring your left hand to your waist. Your right hand's going to be by your side. Now what we're going to do is coordinate the movement of the left knee and the right arm, okay? So as you inhale, bend your left knee and sweep that right arm up. Follow it with your eyes. And when you exhale, draw your belly in and back up. Remember, be kind to your shoulder. If you've got shoulder stuff going on, do a cactus arm instead. Inhale, bend the left knee, right arm up, exhale down. Okay, now we're gonna add our little pause, a two count pause, all right? So inhale, pause for two, exhale down. You might go faster than me or slower than me. If you know what we're doing, you know, do it at your own pace. It's better to go at your own breathing pace. Inhale, pause for two, and exhale back down. Okay, one more time. This time, keep your right arm up there. Pause for two. Exhale in place. And then we're gonna do a little, um, what I like to call, <laughs> I call this the Charleston, but it's a little brain work. So put your left hand down, okay? So as you inhale, start taking the left arm up and the right knee up. 
And as you exhale, mindfully place that right foot back down as your right arm goes up, okay? So this is the inhale, lifting up. You can pause for a moment, but there's enough to think about doing besides worrying too much about your breath in this one. I'm gonna do two more. Inhale, left arm, right knee. Like they're connected, right? And then you connect the right arm and the left knee. Now this time, when you take your right leg up there, we'll stay. Pause in the pose. Some folks might also want to take the right arm up. Some folks might want to straighten out that right leg and really work it. You're welcome to, but you don't have to. <laughs> One more breath. And then release the foot down, release your arms down. And then just give it a little wiggle and jiggle. Now, if you didn't get it, don't worry, we have another side to work on. And <laughs> but this is this is really good brain stuff. This is contralateral movement. We're using opposite sides of the body, which makes the hemispheres connect a little bit. We'll do more of that this week for sure. Okay, so just take a moment in your mountain pose before we do the other side. How does your breath feel right now? How does your body feel? Let your breath be nice and full and easy and smooth. Okay, so now take your right foot forward and your left foot back, and we're going to put the right hand on the waist, right? And then you're coordinating the movement of the left hand, the left arm, with the right leg. So there's a, there's a feeling like they're working together. That's making those the two hemispheres fire together and work together. So as you inhale, bend your right knee, the left arm floats up, and then on the exhale, float it back down. Now we're going to add our little two count pause if you want, right? So inhale, pause for two, and exhale back down. Remember, it's not holding your breath. It should feel really smooth and natural and easy. Again, pause for two if that's comfortable. Draw your lower belly in on your exhale. Support the back, support the exhale. Let's do two more. Okay, now this time you come into the pose, we'll stay there. Pause for two. And then exhale in place. And then your next inhale, let your right arm float up if you want. I don't know if we did that on the other side. So much for focus and attention today, right? I think we didn't. So anyway, <laughs> put the right arm back down. So what we're going to do is on the next inhale, the right arm and the left knee go up together. And when you exhale, you switch and come back down, okay? So try it again. So inhale, right arm, left knee. Pause if you want. Exhale back down. Okay, we're going to do two more of those. Oh, now I remember when we took our arms up. That's when we stayed in the pose. So now we're going to stay in the pose this time. Exhale in place. So if you want, then you can take your, uh, then you can take your left arm up too. And some folks might want to straighten that leg out. If you want to work that, you can. You'd rather keep the knee bent, that's fine too. One more breath. And then just release back down. Okay, so you can wiggle and jiggle, of course. But what I'm also going to suggest here that you do for a moment is just take a moment and kind of tune in and notice. Do you feel some of that rising energy, that nervous system energy? This is Brahmana. That's a very intentional way of practicing. Right, so if you feel like yeah, I'm breathing a little bit and maybe feel a little bit warmer and I feel a little bubbly, rising energy, that's Brahmana. That's what we're looking for. And not in the whole class. This is a very intentional sequence, right? But to create a little focus, it can be really helpful. Also, as I said, good for your immune system. Okay, so here's the next one. Please take a wide stance. And we're going to turn the right foot towards the right, left toes turn in a bit. Okay. So the hands are going to start down on your legs or just close to your legs, whatever's comfortable for you. We're going to do warrior two pose. So the main thing is make sure the right knee is tracking over your second and third toe. Okay. And as you inhale, the arms are going to float up 
to about shoulder height, turn your face, look out over the right fingertips, and on the exhale, float it back down. Now feel as if your ribs are lifting up out of your uh, hips. Your, your breath lifts you up like a hot air balloon, but the legs ground you down. So that's where you get the length in the spine. You do one more of these. And this time when you come into the warrior two pose, we'll stay there. Exhale, draw your belly in a little. Now, this is a great place to work with your breath and work with the brahmana. So as you inhale, feel that rib cage lifting up out of your hips, like a hot air balloon. When you exhale, draw the belly in a bit. Good, you can use ujjayi, you're probably hearing me breathe, right? You can breathe faster than me or slower than me. One more breath, nice and smooth. Be really mindful of your breath. And then turn your right palm up. And we're not doing a big back bend here. We're reaching up through the right hand to lengthen the right side, get a little lateral. Lengthen that right side, pull your belly in on the exhale for support, grounding through your legs, make sure uh, the back heel is grounded. One more breath. And release that arm down, turn your feet so they're both facing the same direction. And then take a moment to notice sensations, how the right side feels slightly different than the left side. Okay, please turn your left foot out, turn the right toes in. Hands are resting on your legs or just a little bit off your legs, or you can kind of even rest them on your low belly. As you inhale, you're going to bend the left knee, come into warrior two, and then exhale, floating back out. So go ahead, do a few more of those. Um, I'm just checking to make sure everything's okay with the sound. So go ahead, do a few more. Inhale, float into it. Good, looks like everything's good. Exhale, floating back out of it. You have like two or three more. Go at your own breathing pace. Take your time. You don't have to have a huge wide stance. And you certainly don't have to make a right angle with your left knee. That, that's just irrelevant. Like, what's the functional purpose? Get a little stronger in your legs. Feel that strength and courage of the warrior. Get the nervous system to be a little stronger, a little more, uh, a little more activated. This time, we'll stay in the pose. As you exhale, draw the belly in. So as you inhale, lift the ribs up out of the hips. Exhale, belly works. Remember I was talking about this on the other side. There's like this possibility here for really working and massaging your musculature, the respiratory musculature from the inside out. Feeling the breath work there. One more breath. Use your exhale. Use your belly for your exhale. Okay, and now we're going to turn that left palm up. Let the right hand descend and use an inhale to lengthen your side body. No need to crunch into your low back here. Some people do this really big back bend thing. You could do a little bit, you know, to feel a little more in your psoas and the side body, but it's not about making a huge back bend, right? It's about the sensations in the left side of the body. One more breath. And as you're ready, release it. Turn your feet so they're both facing the same direction and then walk them back towards each other. Give yourself a little wiggle and jiggle. And take a moment in your round pose. How does your breath feel? How does your body feel right now? You feel a little bit of that rising bubbly energy, which is super helpful for creating a, a greater sense of focus and presence and attention. Okay, so now we're going to do something a little different. It's kind of, it's almost uh, like Qigong. It's a little different movement. And this one requires some internal presence, awareness, and drishti. And the drishti goes right here to the third eye, right? So the awareness is going to come right to the third eye for this practice. And the feet do a little bit of a horse stance. Just kind of turn your toes out a little bit and bend your knees. That, that, that kind of grounded, you know, that's why I said it's a little Qigong, that kind of grounded uh, energy here. When you when you bend your knees, you feel that sense of connected to the earth. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. Okay, now as you inhale, straighten your legs, let the arms float up. 
Palms come together, touch your thumbs to your third eye, and then the center of your chest, bend your knees in that horse stance, and just pause your breath for a moment. Of course, you can keep breathing here, but if it's okay, just let that breath go. And then inhale, arms float up again. Now this time, slide your left hand along the inside of your right arm, bend your knees, and just let your left hand rest just on the shoulder or just below the, the collarbone. Eyes focus on the third eye internally. Pause, inhale back up. Of course you can take free breaths. Don't hold your breath for too long, okay? Exhale to the other side, eyes to the third eye. Just feel that moment of focus. Inhale, float back up. In the last part of this pose, you bring your hands to prayer pose behind your back. And however you would like, Fingers pointing down, fingers pointing up. It's totally up to you what feels comfortable for your shoulders. Eyes to the third eye. You feel that point of concentration in the third eye. Inhale, reach your arms up again. Palms come together. Touch your thumbs to your third eye and then the center of the chest and bend your knees and pause. Breathe as much as you like or as little. It's up to you. Inhale, reach the arms up. Slide the left hand along the inner right arm. That's all those yin meridians. It comes and rests on the chest. The eyes focus on the third eye. The knees bend so you get that grounding energy. Slide the left hand along the inner right arm. And when you get to the top, slide the right hand. Bend your knees. Exhale. Right hand rests on the left side. Eyes to the third eye. Feel that focus and concentration and grounded presence. Inhale back up. And then we'll do prayer pose behind the back. Remember, you're perfectly fine taking a free breath anywhere you like doing this pose. Don't ever hold your breath so it feels like you're holding your breath. You know, it should just feel super comfortable. And we're going to do one more. Inhale, reach the arms up. Thumbs touch your third eye to remind you of that concentration point. And then the center of the chest as you bend the knees and eyes to the third eye and grounding your energy. Inhale, reach up again. Slide your left hand along the inside of your right arm until it rests on the right side of the chest or shoulder. Knees bend, eyes to the third eye, pause. Inhale, reach up again. And exhale to the other side. And if you're going a little faster or a little slower than me, that's just fine, by the way. Eyes to the third eye here, pause. Inhale, reach up again. And then on your exhale, take your hands behind you, bend your knees, eyes to the third eye again. And when you're ready, inhale up. Exhale, let the hands float down. Walk your feet back towards more of a traditional mountain pose. Shake it out a little bit and do you feel some of that downward moving, spiraling energy, connecting down into the earth, grounding and focus at the same time, see if you can tune into that. Okay, you may choose to have a block handy for what we're gonna do um, in a moment. We're gonna come down to the floor. Um, or, um, you don't necessarily need a block, you can also use your hands for this, but if you have a block, it's great to have it around. Okay, so here's what we're going to start with. Um, hands uh, underneath your knees and knees underneath your hips. And we're going to do inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, round the back, lower the forearms, lower the hips. Now keep your belly firm as you inhale forward. At the top of your inhale, pause for two. And then exhale back. Belly in. Complete your exhale. Don't jump into the next pose. Take your time. Inhale forward. Pause for two. Exhale down. Third eye. One more time. Inhale forward. Lift your chest and face. Pause for two. And exhale back. Now, here's where the block might be handy or you could use your fists too. So what I'm going to suggest is you put your third eye on the block and just a little side to side rocking. 
So you get some feeling of connecting to, stimulating that third eye point, which of course is the Agya Chakra, the sixth chakra, the point of concentration, the command center of the entire subtle body. Another thing I like to do in this pose is visualize that I'm just letting go of the stuff that's in my brain, you know, <laughs> like the stuff that I don't need anymore. Let that stuff go. Dump it. Dump it into the earth. Um, one of my teachers, Montauk Chia, likes to say, um, the earth is a great recycling program for your emotions. Let it go. And then taking your time, find your way back up to sitting on your knees. If this is uncomfortable for you, feel free to be in tabletop for a moment as I explain what we're going to do next. This is the rabbit pose, Shashank Asana, sometimes called the hair pose. Um, and it, traditionally it's done, and you're welcome to do it like this, curl your toes under and hold, holding the heels. But for a lot of folks, that just is does not comfortable. It doesn't feel really comfortable in my body. I'd, let, I'd rather have my hands out because it protects my neck. So we're going to take a breath here. And then as you exhale, you're going to put the crown of your head on the floor and lift your hips up gently. Pause your breath. So I'm not smashing my neck to the floor. I'm just gently coming down. Then inhale back up. If you feel dizzy or lightheaded or nauseous or any of those kinds of symptoms, a fluttering heart, any of those symptoms, please stop. Rest in child's pose. You can pick it up for the next one, okay? Let's try to get some nice breath in. On the exhale, taking the crown of the head, lifting the hips, pausing. As you're ready, push down into your hands, lengthen your spine, inhale back up. Exhale in place. We're going to do two more times. Let's deep breath in. And on the exhale, the hands come down, the crown of the head, pause. Lengthen your spine, inhale back up. Are you feeling it? You're feeling a little bit of a, the, um, what's sh something shifting in your brain, right? <laughs> One more time, deep breath in. And on the exhale, the crown head, just very mindfully and carefully so you're not smashing your neck. You don't want to do anything in yoga you're going to regret the next morning, right? So you be really careful about the way you're putting your head on the floor. And then inhaling back up. When you finish, stretch out on your belly. You can turn your head either way that's comfortable. And just take a moment and notice. Take a moment and be present with the sensations in your body, with how your body feels, with how your breath feels. The next pose is called Viman Asana or Chariot, but I like to call it Flying Squirrel. So I'm sorry, I might get in trouble for that, but I, that's what I like to call it. So, <laughs> so here's the pose. So we're going to bring our hands right next to our ribs, forehead to the floor. And as you inhale, you're going to take your arms and legs towards the four corners of your mat. And then when you exhale, tuck your elbows in, look down. Inhale, Superman again. And then exhale all in and down. And pause and take a breath. You can see why I like to call it flying swirl. Now, what we're going to add to it, we're going to do it three more times. And what we're going to add is that two count pause at the, the top of the inhale. Okay? So when you're ready, inhale, four corners of the mat, pause for two. Exhale, feet together, eyes down, elbows back. Inhale, four corners of the mat, pause for two. Exhale together and everything down. And just take a free breath to rest. We're going to do it two more times. So if this is feeling like a little too intense in your back, you want to just do less, right? You don't have to, you can only, you can just do it with your legs and not do your arms. That's fine. Maybe a half flying squirrel. Okay, last one. Inhale, four corners. Pause for two. Exhale, feet together, elbows back, eyes down. Inhale, four corners. Pause for two. Exhale, together, and everything down. And then from here, just go ahead and roll over onto your back. Bring your feet up flat. 
And just take a moment and tune in. How does your breath feel here? How does your body feel? Please bring your knees up to your chest. If you like, you can do a little side to side rocking here. Maybe some circles. And then your arms by your sides, your feet relaxing. As you inhale, push your heels up towards the ceiling. Arms float up and get really long. No special breathing here, just inhaling up, exhaling down. Nice and smooth and fluid. A couple more. Lengthen your spine, lengthen your arms, lengthen your legs. Last one, nice long breath. And when you exhale, again, give yourself another hug and then bring your feet down flat. And just pause here and notice. How does your body feel? I want to show you um, just a, we're going to do Shavasana, but I'm going to show you just a little bit of pressure. Um, so the first one is the very crown of the head, and you can do use both hands and do just a bit of tapping here. A little tapping right at the crown. And then let your fingers keep tapping until you get to your forehead and tap the space between your eyebrows. This kind of tapping massage, actually some people know it as emotional freedom technique, but it actually started with the Chinese, ancient Chinese practice called Douyin, which is Chinese self-massage. So a little tapping on your forehead. So I like the tapping for alertness and focus and attention. It's really nice. So tap your whole forehead, tap that whole front brain. Temples a little bit, just gentle tap with the fingertips. Tap your um, hemispheres. <laughs> tap around your insular cortex here. The temporal cortex. And then give yourself face a little tap because it deserves a little, a little love and massage. You can tap your cheekbones and tap in front of your um, uh, ears at your jaw muscles if you like. A little tap and tap the space between your nose and your upper lip, and then your chin, your jaw. And come on down, give your chest a little tap too. You can take a deep breath in while you're tapping. And then when you exhale, just a little pat with your whole hand. Do, let's do two more of those. Inhale, tap, 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 tap. Exhale with a little patting. One more time, tap, 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 tap. And then rest. But um, you can, you're welcome to put a bolster underneath your legs. I'm going to sit up while I talk you through this, but you are welcome to rest. We have um, just about two minutes for Shavasana. And of course, the great thing about practicing at home is you can just keep doing Shavasana if you want to, right? Taking a moment, kind of letting yourself tune in. How does your breath feel after the practice? Do you feel a little bit of Brahma? And also maybe a little relaxation, because sometimes it's um, the nervous system is dancing. The, the sympathetic uh, and the parasympathetic parts of the nervous system, they're just dancing with each other all the time. And really, the way of working with your nervous system is make that dance more smooth and beautiful. That's what we're trying to do. So see if you can feel that the smooth uh, relaxation part after dancing a little bit, after the little bit of a uh, little bit of um, brahmana, a little bit of energizing practice, and soften. Let go of your arms. Soften the muscles in your face. Let it all go. You'll hear my voice.
voice in just one minute. There'll be a nice, still, um, just a still, quiet time. So you are welcome to stay here and enjoy your Shavasana, enjoy your relaxation for a little longer, feel free. If when you feel like you're ready to finish Shavasana, you wanna sit up, do a little meditation, focus on the concentration point between your eyebrows, by all means, enjoy. Um, please, again, tag a friend. Um, I'll be here for the next next three days doing free practices, home practice challenge. One more thing, um, if you signed up for the challenge, we will be mailing you the stick figure PDF of all the practices on Saturday. You'll get it on Saturday, all the practices we've done this week. And the videos will stay up on my Facebook page, Subtle Yoga with Christine Weber, uh, for a few weeks. Thanks so much for being here. Namaste.